So thank you, uh, dear all, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me here uh, at this year's EU Open Source Policy Summit and uh, many congratulations to entire Open Forum Europe team for successfully growing because uh, this event was in the very beginning uh, fairly small gathering uh, and right now it's one of the biggest open source policy summits in Europe. Uh, I've been personally always convinced of the importance of openness principles. That's maybe one of the reasons why I 14 years ago was actually co-founder of a Czech pirate party uh, because we always believe that the openness and cooperation is a main uh, vector in order to succeed to put things working. And uh, there are ways to build better services for our citizens with the goal to improve their user experience, conceptually increase citizen trust and satisfaction with the government. And again, common approach that are collaborative, that it's open, that it's trustworthy, is one of the important things and it shows to us it's getting more and more important in these days. Over the past year, as challenging as it was, uh, we've been reminded of the importance of unity and cooperation within the Europe and of course not only this hall but the people who are looking at us online shows us how that unity and cooperation is understood by us. And, uh, those are not only the principles uh, of uh, evolution, but they are crucial for our security and to ensure it. Uh, and we also need them fully uh, to reap the benefits of the open source software as a tool for modernization, sovereignty, and economic development. Today, I would like to share with you three things. Uh, I will start by giving you an idea of what is a state of play uh, of an open source in the Czech Republic uh, and share some highlights of our work over the past year since uh, I'm also representing here Czech Republic, its government, and I believe in part of my pirate heart also the open source community. The second thing I'd like to depict uh, is uh, talk about the key challenges and priorities in the open source. Uh, 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 that are ahead of us on the national level. And lastly, I'm going to share with you my perspective on what worked uh, well and where we need to improve further on the European level. So let's start with the first thing. Uh, and I'm aware that the Czech uh, Republic uh, might not seem like uh, the usual suspect when we, when we talk about the open source software and the ish initiative. And indeed, open source policy did not always have a strong uh, political support within the Czech Republic and its government. However, uh, did not stop uh, the local community, including academia, private sector, and civil society organization to keep pushing, uh, developing talents, and creating a strong hub for open source in the Czech Republic. And it's my personal goal to actually uplift that also to the state and uh, governmental level. Uh, I have to mention the city of Brno, uh, which is the second largest city in the Czech Republic uh, as a prime example of uh, such cooperation on the municipality level and the community and also Red Hat and other organization. And Brno is a center of many open source, open software source initiatives, including the strong presence of Red Hat I've already mentioned and its cooperation within the local university ecosystem. And I'm glad that since we joined the government, which is already, geez, 13 months ago, uh, we have an opportunity to strengthen that support for this work also on the highest political level. We now have a chance to create consensus on a broader and a sustained support in the future, regardless of potential changes in a political leadership. And uh, sustainable change is important, not only in the area of open source policy, but more broadly, uh, to the priority of digitalization of uh, public services. And uh, that is why over the past year, my team and, uh, and I have been working uh, and uh, day and night, as I say, but just working, improving the way the digitalization is managed uh, in uh, the Czech 
public sector. Uh, and again, I'm getting back to Brno. There was a big conference of the community, and I, even within you, I'm seeing a lot of people who are, who are presently from that community of the open cities and others. Maybe I'll talk about it later. Uh, maybe one thing, uh, uh, since January 2023, we established a digital and information agency in the Czech Republic with the goal of bringing more coordination and stronger expertise and sustainable uh, on long-lasting changes, uh, which, of course, uh, an open source principle is bringing up to the solution of the public and private sector together uh, would be one of the vectors the agency would push through because it's not the question of a specific ministry, it's a national-wide importance and the usage that we are talking about. Uh, additionally, over the past year, and I was already mentioning that, that during the presidency of the Council of EU, uh, there were several important milestones also taking place. We hosted that open source conference in Brno uh, together uh, with our partners who also published Brno Open Source Declaration. Uh, this declaration laid path uh, of the creation of the Czech National Open Source Program Office under the leadership of Open Cities NGO, which is a long-term supported organization uh, that are gathering the biggest cities to implement and use uh, open source on the field, publish open data, and allow the community to actually build things above them, getting directly involved in the lifetime of the city and its citizens. We also strengthen cooperation between the Ministry of Interior and the Czech National Cyber and Information Security Agency focused on the security aspects of the open source software. And let me take this opportunity to thanks to colleagues from the Czech Republic, as I said, and some of them, but I can't see through the fog that is here, are sitting, uh, are sitting somewhere somewhere here in the audience. Thank you guys for pushing this policy in the Czech Republic forward. And I hope more and more cities and institutions will join you since uh, you are taking a lead in the implementation of, uh, of, entire, of entire buckle of the principles and putting it to the ground. Uh, maybe the second thing, uh, what we have to work on right now, what's lie ahead of us. Uh, we had a lot of work in front of us, including further work on legislation procurement policies that would encourage rather than prevent to use an open source software. It's not only the length of the procurement services, but also we need to think open, you know, not to vendor lock it through the proposals to the business requirements, of course. And maybe sometimes in the future when the community will be strong enough and the golf stock and all the projects will be up and running, the public procurement that in many cases really slow down the digital transformation would be very specific parts of the services, maybe some minor, of, not of uh, importance, maybe not even of the size, but basically the common, common solution would be able to anyone who's going to need it in that part, which would open the uh, industry uh, options to focus on more challenging future path of AI, cloud computing, advanced quantum, etc., rather than developing already legacy solutions to the things that government did for tens of the years and still doesn't have a proper solution that it's modular that can be carried on by whoever understood the open source software principles. So, so this is important part, public procurement and its uh, adjustment toward open source principle. Uh, it will also be an important part for us in Czech Republic, as I said that, to cooperate with the open source community uh, through the digital and information agency again because it's not the question of a ministry of a regional development, I'm also in a head of, or other ministry of interior, those principles are common, they are umbrella to all what we do in the, in the digitalization of the e-government and other public services. And last but not least, it's crucial for us to upskill, and I thanks, I was already talking to people from Red Hat, uh, year 2023 is year of skills, right? And all of you here, you've got, I believe, decent or Excellent, excellent digital skills. Some of us are just speakers, right? I didn't write a code for at least 10 years, so I'm probably currently doesn't even know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, uh, I still probably can write a code and do the enterprise architecture, but uh, we are developing things when we need to go further, but we also need people to be able to operate them. 
to understand them in order to fight uh, disinformation and misusage of uh, technology against people we need to build technology that people believe and you only believe uh, and trust to the thing that you at least understand somehow so please anyone who can put a hand together this upcoming year and maybe next five years the digital upskills of entire society with the basic skills filling the gaps because we do face digital poverty but we need people to be able to survive in the 21st century and all this uh, resilience you know uh, whatever unity strength of the society is that we understand what's going on around and since more and more things are going around are digital based our online, our, our social media, uh, we have to focus on that and contribute. Uh, and I believe the open source community, as it helped with the solutions, putting on the ground the software development, you know, architecture proposals, and, and many things also regarding to the war in Ukraine, the education of the community, academy, academy uh, uh, programs of the, of the Red Hat and the others, it's very important because we need this massive upskill and it couldn't be done by the local NGOs who can help on the place with the elder people do courses for the women because we do have a significant uh, uh, depth because only 20% uh, of, the, of the ICT uh, people involved uh, are female in the Czech Republic it's only nine so we are missing a specialist in many areas but also this this balance of a gender it's quite a bad thing and uh, last thing that was mentioned on the telco conference when we were fin finalizing our presidency by the commissioner and by my final speech was that part get the get it balanced you know and focus on that the digital is not whatever gender specific area and again an open source community can help us with that um, on the european layer there has been a, an amount of legislative work done it was mentioned here uh, by uh, by the initial in the initial speech uh, and i would like to use the opportunity also to uh, thanks to colleague from the european commission and particularly from dg digit for the work they've done and uh, for the cooperation that uh, we do have on this specific field. And I believe also that uh, in the future, and we started with that and I was talking to members of the European Parliament, we have to go for the systematic support uh, on the European level of the open source uh, uh, and it's necessary and a benefit of all the stake, uh, stakeholders because EU as is needs to push that forward as well, especially when we talk about the future of, let's say, some common digital solution, interoperability of European institutions. Uh, I believe that open source would play an important role. Well, one of my key priorities both on both uh, national, uh, national level but also European level during the presidency was the revision of ADAS regulations. I believe that uh, as a COVID pass or green certificate was mentioned here, uh, this is going to be one of the biggest challenges to have a European digital identity wallet that would be secure, that uh, would have all the features to protecting the citizen data, would be uh, cyber secure, friendly, whatever, but enough open also could be used for uh, whatever future future purposes. And uh, there is a Im huge potential of its usage, not only within the eGov and a state to state communication, but to entire internet population, which is, uh, if I take a look how many households are connected in the Czech Republic. It's basically almost everyone except those people who are excluded, which is one part we have to work together, more of a technology and a telco companies. So I'm proud the Czech presidency uh, brought us this general approach uh, and uh, also it included a strong endorsement of an open source solution. However, our work doesn't end here and uh, after those 13 months, in the politics and in the government. Uh, this was the, my final agreement. The work will never end and it will never be better of having more uh, life, uh, life work balance. Uh, so we speed it up on a national level. Europe, due to the resolving issues of the Ukrainian war as well, the momentum of uh, cooperation is, uh, is enormous. 
of, uh, of what we can do together, how we can easily push our national or our national companies uh, wishes aside and cooperate. That's why we finalized so many important files, push them towards, uh, uh, towards uh, European Parliament and please all of you use that momentum. Uh, we won't lose it. The war is not over. We've got still a lot of work to do regarding to secure physically but also online uh, the, the environment within the Europe but uh, it was unique and thanks maybe people are watching to all of my colleagues from different governments because the atmosphere even on the lower level was unbelievably open towards finding the common solution that everybody would agree to that and would be carry on further towards our citizen in either future legislation within the countries but also to the real implementation many important people from European Commission and from whatever uh, areas said, uh, you know, guys, we talked a lot about the things. Let's move more to the action, right? Let's deploy, let's implement, you know, uh, and uh, it's on both way. We need a framework, we need the legislation, but we also need the hands on the ground or on the keyboard. And that's again, one of the biggest strengths of the community that we, we include a lot of people who are actually writing the code, you know, uh, doing the solution, doing the enterprise architecture, and uh, we just have to join in the common force and uh, speed up. Uh, maybe one last thing uh, for me as an IT person, which somehow, as I said, put aside for the last 10 years, and a politician, the community was always the key and uh, all the milestones and visions that politicians or legislation makers or negotiators or uh, uh, lobbyists, which is nothing bad on lobbying for specific purpose. One, it's balanced and it's legal. Uh, it cannot be done. It cannot be done without the community, with the, with the global support. And uh, that's again why I would like to thanks to organizers of this summit that uh, bring us together today. And I would also like to share my commitment that the Czech Republic will work towards not only participating in for the building and strengthening the open source community. Please uh, enjoy the rest of the summit and for them with its unforgettable atmosphere this weekend and thank you and maybe, excuse me, I was a little bit long. So the next speaker probably need to speed up.